Hi and welcome. In this episode, we'll add uniqueness validation on client. And the way we do it, we make request to server when user tabs away from username or email. So let's open text field group component that we created earlier. And we use this component for username and for email. And here, let's add another event on blur. And we bind it to check user exists. So this function will be passed to this our particular component. So let's deconstruct it here. Check user exists. And of course, we need to add it to the prop types right here. Check user exists. And that's going to be React prop types function, but it is not required because not all text field groups should react on blur. So these are changes for the text field. So now that we have it, let's open sign up form. And here, where we have our text field group for username and for email, let's add something like check user exists equals this check user exists. And the same thing I'm going to copy right here. And now we need to add this event handler check user exists takes event. And here in the in the constructor, let's bind it to this. Okay, so first of all, inside of this event handler, let's define field, which is e target name. So that's going to be username or email. And second of all, we'll have the value itself. So we have target value. And then if value not equal to empty string, then we'll have the action. So the, inside of this event handler, we want to make request to the server. So we'll use another action for it. So we'll have something like this props and the action name will be is user exists. And we pass the value, which is going to be username or email. And this action as always will return promise. So we can use then like this. So now we expect that is user exists is a function on props. So let's go to the bottom here and let it to prop types is user exists prop types function and it is required. Let's save it. Now we need to pass this is user exists function into this component from sign up page. So inside of this, we'll have our is user exists imported from sign up actions. Then we add it to deconstruction right here is user exists. Then we add it to our component here is user exists equal is user exists. Then we expect it on prop types as well. So we'll have is user exists prop types function required. And then of course, in connect, we add is user exists like this. So this way we take action, we connect it with the sign up page, and then we pass it down to the sign up form. And it seems that we are doing a lot of unnecessary work here. I think we should unconnect this particular component and connect the form component itself instead. But we don't have time for it right now. So I'll leave it up to you as an exercise. Okay, so now we need to define this action. So let's open action sign up. And that's going to be very simple, standard thunk action is user exists, it takes identifier, it returns a dispatch. And from it, we return promise from access, we make making get request to API users with identifier. Okay, so now if you try it out in a browser, it should make this request, let's have a look. So now if I blur away, nothing happens, oops, error happens. And that's that's a typo in the form. So let's go back here and I'm going to fix it right here, not T, but E, of course, let's try it again. So now if we blur away, nothing happens, but if we type something and blur, we'll have a net network request with this particular stuff to user API users and our value, which is exactly what we want to have. Excellent. Let's create the endpoint. So we, for that, we go to routes users. And inside of it, let's define another route, get identifier. So it 
again takes request and response pretty usual stuff and he will have the same query that we did for validations of for uniqueness so we'll have the same user query we'll have where email request params identifier or where username the same thing request params identifier but also it's very important we need to select only username or email or anything like that because we do not want to select password digest that's not secure so we'll add select and we'll take username and email columns from it and then when it's done we'll have we'll fetch it and it returns promise and if there is a user it doesn't matter if there is or the reason we just respond with json with this user so if there is no user it will be null if there is a user then it's going to be the user with its username and email maybe we can provide id as well something like that of course you can extract this particular uniqueness query from here and from our validation so right here we have duplication of sorts let's try it out in a browser so now if I provide username that is there and I blur away you'll see that we have the user username and with my email but if I provide something else and blur away it will return user null so now we can work with that in our component so let's go back to our form and here we'll need populate errors right so let's define errors here and we get it from this state errors and then if respond data user is not null then we have this errors with field that's why we extracted it here and field in this case will gonna be either username or email depending on which field we left and we add error message there is user with such username or email otherwise errors for this field is an empty string and after that we set state with errors let's try it out in a browser I provide existing username and here you see we have there is user with such username if I provide existing email the same happens good but we have a little problem here if we tab away we have these errors but then if we press for example sign up these errors are gone and another kind of error appears and that happens because we mixed on blur validations with on submit validations and on submit will rewrite overwrite the on blur validations usually i don't like to do that but in this case i took a risk because it's fun so how can we fix it one way to do that is to disable button right here if we have uniqueness error so this way user must fix them before continuing so let's do that so for that in our state let's add another field and we call it invalid and by default it's false then at the bottom here we have the button and it's disabled if this state is loading or this state invalid so in both of these cases we want to disable the button and the last thing we need to go back to our event handler here and in our event handler we'll have invalid variable and if we have an error we set invalid to true otherwise we set invalid to false and we need to set state for invalid as well let's try it out in the browser so now if I provide existing username we'll have an error and sign up is disabled so user must fix it and only then he can actually sign up cool 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 personally I hate blur validations as a user they irritate me more than bring me value but that's not about me but about users and many users tend to like them so that's it for this episode so let's commit in this episode we added client-side uniqueness validations thanks for your time and if you found this episode useful please share it with your friends to get updates about new episodes subscribe to this channel or follow me on Twitter and of course you can always ask any questions you have on an associated blog post. Thanks for watching.